Okay, um, like I said, my name is Robert Roy. I'm with Seagate, and I do uh, performance engineering there. And you know, I, I looked at the agenda and saw these large, broad sweeping um, topics, so I, I hope you'll indulge me for a very specific topic, um, very small, which kind of matches the, the time left here. But, um, but basically, I, I, uh, I wanted to talk about a little luster bug that I worked on last year, uh, this, just this past year. And because um, I think it has some general benefit to people. Um, who's using Luster in the crowd? It's pretty, it's got to be more than two or three. <laughs> um, so the, the problem is, is what we noticed was, is that buffered I.O. reads were slower than they needed to be. And, and slow is kind of hard to quantify, um, but our particular Seagate's uh, kind of last generation project, uh, product, the Luster product, um, operated at about 4.5 gigabytes a second per OST. So this kind of building block that we sell, um, it operates at nine gigabytes a second per OST. Um, I can get that out of writes. I can get that out of direct IO writes. I can get that out of buffered writes. I can get that out of direct IO reads, but I couldn't get that out of buffered reads. I just it couldn't happen. And what bugged me even more about the problem was, is I've seen other vendor slide decks and I see the same thing. Um, you know, Seagate has a, a distributed parity OST, which is um, 41 drives, but I've seen it on traditional 8 plus 2 kind of OSTs that you see uh, more commonly. Buffered reads are unusually slow. Um, I throw as many clients at it as I can. Lots of clients in the lab, and I don't get the performance to improve at all. So that suggests maybe the problem is server side. Um, but what's the difference between direct I.O. and buffered I.O.? There's not much difference there. Um, on, the, on the server side, the, the, the data path should be about the same, so that suggests the problem is the client side. But the real difference between buffered I.O. is you're reading from the Linux buffer cache rather than directly all the way to storage. Um, so we suspected read ahead, and indeed that's where the problem is, but I kind of want to walk you through um, you know, where we found the problem, how we found the problem. So I'm kind of a network guy um, by trade. I started my career in, in, the, in, in, a, in network vendor support, and so I'm, I'm always going to the network when I look for a problem. And um, there's uh, some great kind of... Uh, documentation out there on the on the uh, on the internet in the Google YouTube video that explains how to get Wireshark dissectors for Lustre going and it's a great tool because you can kind of see exactly what's going on so this is basically what I have printed out here and I don't mean to bore you with the details but source address destination address and object ID and I have a an, basically an offset in length there and what I found was when I did buffered reads um, it never ramped up to the four meg RPCs that we typically see. When I do direct I.O. reads, I get these big four meg RPCs. Um, and sure enough, if I used one meg RPCs on, uh, on our storage platform, or on any, any storage platform I found, um, the performance isn't as good as the four meg RPCs. So the problem was that Lustre Read Ahead um, seems to be a little bit broken. Um, where it's supposed to initially fetch one meg of data and then ramp up as it becomes successful. Um, it turns out what it was doing is it was always just getting one meg. It, at the very beginning of the uh, transfer, you see a couple where it ramps up to two, but you never see it go much above that. And at the end of the, the, the captures, you know, it's all one meg. And so, the, so how, what is, how does that really affect the performance of the storage? Well, it, it's not really so much... Um, it, the one meg RPCs, it's all of those one meg fetches from, from the disk subsystem on, this, on the server. So when I said the problems in the client, I really mean the problems in the client and that read ahead is only fetching one meg RPCs, but the problems also in the server and the server's ability to fetch data onto the wire at one meg intervals. I did another one with a kind of unrealistic um, I used a 64 meg buffered I.O. and I saw this big giant pile of 4 meg um, I.O.s on the network and that was great and the performance was great for the first system call but then it quickly dropped off to 1 meg. So the first system call served on demand 
using a more direct I.O. style I.O. and the rest is served out of, out of the Linux buffer cache being prefetched using those one meg RPCs. So why is this a problem? This was a problem for me, again, because I was seeing it across other vendors' equipment as well as ours, so it wasn't just a Seagate problem, it was, it was more of a luster problem. Um, and n people don't use direct I.O. reads. I mean, in general, from what I've seen in the field analyzing applications, um, mostly what we see is people using buffered I.O. because it's supposed to be faster. So where's the problem? I'm not a software developer by, by trade, so um, I, had a, I have a, a pile of luster developers behind me with this, just in full disclosure. Um, but the problem was is we had this, uh, we had this line that set the, uh, the page cache shift, the, the, amount of, the amount of data that we're going to increase our read ahead by. We had it pinned to one meg, and indeed it wasn't ever going beyond that. And then right above that is this little blurb of text that says, yeah, we know it's broken um, and we're going to fix it in the future and to see this kind of luster bug. And if you go into that luster bug, it, it basically is, um, discusses when they started bringing, you know, backporting the, the four meg RPCs into the, into the luster software um, and the luster client that we started to see a problem and the fix was to set this at, at one meg. <coughs> So again, not a software developer by trade, but I basically just set the, the, uh, that value instead of one meg to four meg, um, just to see if that was where the problem was. And the results were actually pretty compelling. Um, sorry about the, uh, the, I don't have a very nice graph here, but in general, the, uh, the one meg RPC, or the one meg reads, um, using, the, using the read ahead step of one meg, um, I was only getting about seven gigabytes a second for that full platform. Remember I told you earlier it's supposed to get about nine. Um, when I increase that to four meg, I've got, I've got you know, eight, eight point six. And then by increasing the, uh, the read ahead buffer values by four, four X to accommodate the four meg RPCs, um, I'm able to achieve the full nine gigabytes a second and, and then some change, uh, nine, you know, 9.5. Oh, I have a button here. So in conclusion, and, and I'm trying to, trying to condense here a little bit, the um, four meg RPCs are unreasonably, you know, if you use four meg RPCs in your Lustre network and you are using buffered I.O. for reads, um, the performance isn't what you should expect. You can get more performance out of your system um, with, with, a, with a small amount of work. Uh, we've, Seagate has taken the, uh, that change that I presented up there and improved upon it. And so there's now a, uh, a, a parameter in Lustre that you can set that read ahead step at. Um, there's a link here, and I'm sure the, the materials will be distributed, but that's, uh, that's a link to the actual um, change so that you could change the um, Luster client. Um, of course, that's a, that's a Seagate kind of um, change. We pushed it up to, um, to Intel with an LU bug, right? That's, that's the, the JIRA that Luster uses it to, uh, or that Intel uses it to track the changes. And, um, just, a, just in full disclosure, right, this isn't fixed yet in Lustre yet, and the, they're ch taking a little bit different of approach than, than we did. So while we put a tunable in there, so if you had a 4 meg RPC or a 1 meg, 2 meg RPC, um, you could adjust it as, as, you, as you saw fit. Um, the, the Intel change, based on my reading of the bug, is what they're, what they're going to do is just kind of pin that to automatically tune with your RPC size so that you don't have to go back and, and set something. Um, and we'll probably take their change as soon as it's, as it's finished, um, just to keep everything, everything the same. 